good, so let's check that out. <coughs> so if we go in the cave here, starting cave, you can see that we started to add a little bit of lighting into here. It's gonna take me just a second to get right up in that cave. So we added a few lights and a workbench and kind of filled out the area. And then we also created a little tunnel that we're going to take to the top for a, you know, kind of lookout tower. And then over here, created a little shed, farm with a water wheel, and a couple silos over by this tree. So that's what we got added yesterday, and then we started with this fence line, but I think I'm gonna get rid of that. Oh yeah, and we added some water. So if we take a look at the water over here, let me just make sure I got this pulled up. I want to have my stream pulled up over here so I can see it. All right. So let's go look at this water right here. So if we kind of just grab this piece right here it's gonna be and if we move it up or down you can see how the water will kind of fill the area so and then we get to a certain point where we're now like basically the line the same height so we're gonna have that down low to start with and as you'll fill up this waterfall and get more going then you will be able to uh, get it all worked out. Just one second. All right. So, and then if we take a look at this in the, the game while it's playing, let's get this. It's gonna take a second to load. Wow. First time you run the application every time, it always takes a little while. All right, here we go. I'm getting a little action now. All right, so if we take a look, we've got a spinning water wheel and spinning windmill so far in terms of lively things. So one thing I want to do is I want to add a component a camera component so I am going to go to my package manager so I don't I don't know if these windows will pop up but uh, basically Cinemachine is uh, an extension that you can add on that just a bunch of really fancy cameras <clears throat> so I'll show how that works Okay, so I'll get that installed. You have to install it for every game that you make. So you can see over on the right side over here, it's starting to get loaded in. Just take a minute. <clears throat> but that'll give us a lot more options for like cameras real quick. Thank you. 
There we go. Hope everybody's having a nice day. It's very cold still. Very snowy. Just got to get all my packages installed. That way we can start adding a movement script to our character and start getting the world actually built up. Always feels a little bit better when you can move. Wow, this is the longest it's ever taken a load in for me. Oh, here we go. All right, perfect. So now that we got that loaded in, we're gonna, now we have this extra option up at the top for Cinemachine. So I'm gonna create a free look camera. So this is separate from your main camera. Basically think of it as like a brain for your camera. So I'm going to set my character as the follow for the camera here. Okay. And so then that's going to create a few rings. See these red rings around him, kind of. So if we were to start this right now, it wouldn't look very good. <clears throat> Basically, we're way too in close to the camera, or to the character, so. As we move our mouse around. So what we wanna do is we wanna move this bottom rig to by hip height. Pump up that radius. The middle rig. We want to bring that in a little closer. And then for the top rig, we want to bring that out bigger. So if we take a look at that now, it's still going to have this look on it, but at least we have a better view. So I think we just need to make our our orbits a little bit bigger but if we maximize that 
and then select a different object so it doesn't <coughs> hone in on a character like that. So, if we're looking down, we're probably going to want to bring those orbits out just a little bit farther, not too much farther. Okay, so we'll take a look at that. That's a bit of a better view now. All right. And just one second, I'll be. All right, I return. I know there's a ton of you that were waiting for me here, so thank you to my one viewer, which might even be me. You never know. All right. So let's check these orbits one more time just to make sure. If you notice, it, it looks straight at the character. I believe the character is facing the wrong We'll have to flip them around, but that's all right. We'll do that when we build up the character's layout. All right. I think that gives us a pretty good view. Let's just create a new C-sharp script named Movement. This will be what kind of handles all of our inputs and our mice and such. Just so I can see this a little better. All right. So I am going to need to create a new window. Stop the stream. Window capture, and this is going to be for Visual Studio, which is where. Let's get that sized up a little bit.
<laughs> wow. There we go. Now you're on the right layer. Okay. So this is gonna be our main movement script. So a couple things we're gonna want first off is for our character, we're gonna use a character controller. So if we look over here at a couple other movement scripts, this is another one that uses a character controller. So if we look, we've got velocity, gravity, all of our things so kind of the difference here between picking you know a rigid body versus a um, character controllers you have to do you know kind of the physics equations yourself so I could just take this section and kind of take that character controller for now just so we can get moving around so we'll do that so we're gonna want these four things or five we'll pop them over before our start and then if we also go back in <coughs> we are also gonna want <coughs> excuse me dairy me we are gonna want uh, the gravity and the velocity and go back down here we're just going to take this whole fixed update method and we're going to pop it right below here and if we look at our start method in terms of things that we need uh, the only thing we really need to do is set our gravity So all these other scripts are just from a bunch of different games I have, so. And they're all out of order, so, you know, we've got our mailbox smashing game, our slime game. Uh, that's for our bunny game. You know, mailbox, all over. So. All right, so let's just save that for now. And then if we go back into Unity, so let's get Visual Studio disabled. And let that compile. <clears throat> no errors. And for Voltman, we're gonna want to, or let's uh, create an empty and this will be our character. Our character is going to be at zero, zero, zero. Which is right centered on our fella. Then we're going to take our guy. Pop him in. And then our character, we're gonna give a character controller to. So you can see it gives a, a little collider already to start with. And so for this guy, we just wanna make sure we kind of match the height of our character. And we'll just widen it up a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Proud of that one. And then we're also going to add that script that we just created. And we need to drag our character into there. And then for the camera, 
we want to drag our main camera in. So that way, uh, what this script does is it takes a look at where you're facing. Here, we'll, we'll throw, as you can see, there's no, uh, there's no collider set on the ground here. So we'll take map one and we'll select this guy and we want to add a collider. So we're gonna pick a mesh collider because it already has the mesh filter for this cube. And so now we shouldn't fall straight through the ground. So now we're standing and as you can see, our guy is backwards. So, but if we turn this way, we're gonna face so if we take our character, our fella, and give him a 180 degree rotation on the, the Y axis, now we're going the right way. Okay, so now we can actually maneuver around our map as our character. So a couple things we'll want to do is change our speed and we'll add an animation for moving around. Alrighty. Bit of progress there. Let's get zoomed in here. And then I wanted to uh, change the speed So I'm going to change that script a little bit just so that we can manage the speed from our uh, our inspector. So I'm just going to change the private to public there. And I'm going to get rid of the... Oh, sorry. Get rid of the point or the eight float that they already have us with. So there should be now a speed value in the inspector. Just set it eight. So now if we set it to something like 20, a little, little over double. Now we can actually move and you'll see as we go up these hills we can actually we will slowly go up them and in terms of going down right now we can just go into the water but we will change that also we got to move this tree because we uh we did a bit of terraforming in this area. So depending on the slope, we'll only be able to go up so far. And then if you see, we can just drop straight off the edge. All right. It's so good. Got a little bit of movement. So a couple things I want to do is I want to make it so we can cut down these trees. We're going to need an inventory. So let's start working on that. Let's pull up Blender real quick. <laughs> so this is the the map, and for right now, I'm gonna delete this fella off, and I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna open Unity just so that that starts importing, because it always takes a while. And then let's open a new fella. did not like that all right get rid of the light and the camera you always want to do that first okay and so what we want to build here is we're gonna build kind of this is gonna be our HUD so we're gonna set this on a different light layer 
than our our main setup so that we don't have shadows and stuff interacting improperly with this but we can still make it 3d and look a little nice so i think to start with we just want to thin it down and we'll we'll do things across the y axis here or over the x axis whatever you want to think of it <clears throat> so we want a thin panel This is going to be our main objects. Take that second duplicated one, make it a little bigger. Bring it in a bit. Or right, I think we're going to expand it and on each side I'm going to add a little indicator for our battery and for uh, <clears throat> our water level because we're also going to need water for our tank. So let's start by making the one for the battery. So we're going to start with just a cube. Actually no, let's let's because we can make it 3D, so let's do a little cylinder. Gonna want it to be get this moved over. This will be the little nub at the top. So as you can see, it sticks through the other side, but that is fine. That is kind of the intended result. Because the back side won't really matter. You won't ever be able to see it. Hopefully. You might be able to. I don't know. I'm not perfect. And then I'm going to just add some little cubes that are going to be essentially little lights. <laughs> Thin little bars. We want this to have same Y value. That way it all looks spiffy spam. So now that we are over there, let's uh, shrink that down a little bit. We're gonna put or yeah, we'll put put one at the zero. We'll do we'll do three lights to start with. All right, I dig that. And you'll be able to upgrade this battery over time. I know that everybody was on their edge of their seats to know. Okay, so there's our battery indicator. Now let's make a water tank. So let's make a little water droplet shape, I think. Thank you. 
is a method to this madness, I swear. There's probably a better way to do that, I just don't really know how. And that's fine. I want to shrink that a decent bit. I know it looks too big, but uh, it'll definitely shrink in size. So let's check out what it looks like when we Select all. Grab this section. Shrink it down a little bit. Okay. Just want to give some depth to the thing. So it looks a little nicer. <clears throat> so let's save this right now as our HUD. start here and we'll work our way up because we can just pop things down here kind of willy-nilly in text to start with but that way we can get it going in the game so let's get that loaded up so we got our HUD right here So you can pop that out. Always good to just sometimes pop things at zero, zero. And this guy, we want to attach it to our main camera. Which 
wherever it may be. So obviously for right now, it's gonna have the regular shadows. And as you can see, it looks like our geometry is a little whack on this object here, but that's fine. So let's give these guys I want to put glass because they're gonna be the little lights so we'll apply little halos to those and we can turn them off and on I wonder why that's rotated it's kind of funny <clears throat> for now I'm gonna add the glass texture to this guy over here because it'll be like a a water filling receptacle. Okay, so let's see if this maneuvers around with us. All right. So it at least sticks to the camera. See, you can see how the shadows land on the thing itself, which is not ideal. So one thing I want to do is I want to scale this down a decent bit. And we'll take a look at that. So now it's on the screen, you can move around. Looks a little wonky, but that's okay. I think I'll probably make that a little smaller, a little longer this way. And I want to move that down a little bit. Cool. Got inventory, battery, water. <clears throat> Can move pretty fast. So now, as you can see, the next problem is if we run through all the trees, they do not have colliders on them. So let's take a dead tree. So it's cylinder one of a dead tree. So if we add a mesh collider to that guy, and then we go back into this tree and see, now can't go through it. So the only thing is we'll just have to do that for all of them. Shouldn't take too long.
Oh, not a rigid body. Ooh. That'd be wild. I mean, it's nice to give life to trees and all, but I don't need, know if it needs to be flopping all over. So this is why, this is a, a lesson in why you sometimes finish a full tree before you pop them around. Because after you duplicate them, you know, it's, it's a little different. You won't have all the properties. You can always set it as a prefab and then update the prefab. Which I'll probably do for trees in the future, but... For now, I just wanted to get these dead trees out because these will be replaced anyways. Oh. Alright. So now let's get back out there. See if we can run into any tree. And make sure we can get up on top of that hill over there. Shadows working. Looks like we can get up this hill. So that's good. Bump into the tree. And then we've got that tree over there that we want to bring down. Also, let's go back into our HUD real quick and fix up the water droplet guy. It's a shame it doesn't come through like that. So what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to instead <clears throat> Subdivide it a bunch so I can get a bit more of a complicated shape first.
So now we can scale this guy down. And then I just want to take This side out a little bit. Alright, I think that looks good. So we'll save that puppy and go back into our game. Take a look at that. Yeah, that looks fine. And again, we're gonna set that on a different layer so that it doesn't interact with the lights going on that directional light. I want to Get a quick script real quick. Ooh. Okay. So now on to my directional light. Oh yeah, let's let's close everything up just so it's not so convoluted. And get this script loaded up. You'll see it pop up in a second here. There we go. Rotate. So basically what that does is you tell it a speed you tell it a direction and then it rotates not much to it I should close these up so declutter the space So in this directional light, let's add that rotate script so I can show you how that works. So for the direction, let's throw in an X. For speed, let's throw in five. And now 
we have moving shadows so you don't have this giant bright light over here it is moving very fast right now so you can see there that is so fast and then we're gonna have a little bit of night time so see that ease in water down here okay and should be coming up any second now you'll actually see because the road uh, directional light just goes through everything really it's as if the light was in any and all places you can kind of see it come up on the bottom sides of objects. So like if you look under the little roof sections there, while it's nighttime, you'll see that the, while those are really dark right now, they'll actually get lit up. So I'll show you that. Got that incredibly fast sun going down Let's see if we look right as it starts to light up I'll hit these first or I'm wrong and that'd be that'd just be embarrassing because I walked all the way over here I guess I am just totally wrong. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So let's get zoomed in on our character here. So let's throw some halos on these guys. Quite showing up, but uh, let's see what it looks like when we're playing. Might want to turn down the intensity of the directional light, that might also be throwing off. I just want to see if it looks any more noticeable at night time. If we can even see anything. Alright, so I don't see the halo on that guy. Try a thousand, just you never know. Or is the intensity too low? All right, so let's take our directional light. give it like a point Thank you. 
Oh, what the heck? Are you kidding me? Where did that come from? Okay. See what it looks like with a point one size. So let's try a little area light. Sorry, a point light. See what that looks like. a nice little glow across. Set the position of this guy. Nope. 
Okay. And cube two. So now, oh no. Do I have a network hair? I think that looks really good though. <laughs> Dang it, did my internet go down? Oh, I'm gonna be bummed if it did. Uh, Cause that looks pretty dang cool. And so those will turn off as we go. Um, uh, I'm gonna go see what happened to my internet, and I'll be back. Hopefully this worked.